Hello and welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Nerdix Dave and I'm joined by all these wonderful nerds. And no, we are not playing Dungeons and Dragons as we normally do, but Cypher System for a Supers game. Nobody's Hero by our illustrious GM, Stephen Partridge, who is amazing. Uh, before we get started, I just want to remind folks, and maybe you don't know, we have a Kickstarter going on. It is fully funded. There's a link in the description for Magic Item Cards for D&D. &D. You can go check that out. With that, I'm just going to throw it right to our GM. Thank you so much. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Stephen Partridge, and uh, we are going to do our recap. Del, I don't think you participated in this. Um, we do like a recap where everybody says who they are, says what character they're playing, and then says something they remember about last time. So I have to use a D5 system because I have five players. Ooh. So we're going to go with the D10 because that's a thing. And while I'm trying to figure all that business out um, to decide which die looks the most like it's going to kill my players, um, we are going to uh, say we love Sirenscape and they're awesome and we use it for our music and it has some jazzy vibes right now. Oh, it landed on Robin. Hey, Robin. Oh, good. Hi, I'm Robin. Um, I have books, books in description, click link, read weird fiction. Um, so I will be playing Magpie, who is definitely a villain and uh, not at all heroic and... <laughs> Uh, if you make fun of her for that, she will steal your wallet. Uh, and I remember there uh, was a guy on the roof of the uh, weather station, or was it just the news station? Like, do you do you guys just do weather, or is it also news, Ted? News. Okay, the news station, uh, who had tethered one of the um, guys who works there to the antenna, and we had to go and rescue him. So I stole him off the roof, and then I stole his wallet, because he made fun of me. As you do. <laughs> and uh, Ted, you're up. Uh, so, you know, last session was our inaugural session of the Nobody's Heroes and it was all about trying to get the group together to go work for, uh, you know, th this, you know, th this agent who, you know, took some time to get us all collaborated all together. Nightlight had to kind of sneak in because he hadn't really been out and discovered yet. So that was kind of cool. But there was a whole scene in the mall and a whole scene as you know robin pointed out where we were fighting this meteorologist you know dude who happened to actually be the the dude who i stole his job um <laughs> not really by choice but by just like by chance uh so you know he's got it in for me and oh my god if he actually finds out that not only was i there to help thwart him uh but i've got his job as well he's going to be even more tense. uh and uh since Dell has never done this before I'm going to throw it to them. Hey guys, I'm Dale, otherwise known as Mootly. Uh, you can find me on the TikToks or on my vampire, the masquerade show, San Antonio by Night, with a bunch of other amazing queer neurodivergent BIPOC vampire ladies going crazy, uh, half killing each other half the time. Uh, I remember uh, Elang destroying two people's secret identities, uh, her own and possibly their, men their uh, mentor uh, provider by saying out loud while they're being coveraged on Nukes coverage where to send the bill for her product, uh, so for her property damage. And Elang remembers that Magpie is a hero. That's totally what happened in Elang. <laughs> Gonna steal your wallet. <laughs> Elang would have to have a wallet. Yes. Um, I will check it today. Cool. I am <clears throat> Dave from Nerdarchy, but you probably already know that. I am playing the hero Blowhard, uh, a.k.a. Uh, Johnny Silver, a strip mall uh, sensei, and has already been made fun of by half the group as being a boomer, but that's okay. Someone has to be the responsible one, if not pompous, of the group. Uh, <clears throat> I'm just curious to see how many how many villains Ted's going to create for us throughout this uh, campaign. Um, I think you guys pretty much covered everything. You know, Ted was assaulted by said villain before he became a villain uh, in his in his secret identity. And um, th then there was some more property damage, but no secret identities were disclosed at that point. Uh, and I think that was like kind of our first meeting, but we weren't right quite together as a group yet. Um, and I guess uh, everyone's going by you, Doug. Yeah, I'm Nerder Doug. I'm playing Leo Lampley, whose superhero identity is Nightlight. 
Um, and uh, his his uh, capers started off at Castopolis High School, I guess, in class uh, with one of his classmates, uh, who they got paired up to do a project and um, wound up uh, working, going to his the mall where his dad's store was to work on it. But uh, some a hullabaloo ensued there. Um, later in the evening, um, he was. Uh, excited to see that his his personal hero blowhard was uh, you know going into some sort of clandestine meeting of uh, capes and tights so he did sneak in uh, to the careless capers uh, storefront and they wound up uh, coming together as a team uh, to, at least to uh, thwart the threat of the uh, nefarious weatherman and uh, hopefully save the day and who, uh, who knows what uh, we'll do next all right, so um, thank you very much, everybody. So all of you find yourselves sitting in a diner where uh, Walter Mathis, your patron, has invited all of you across town. And as you sit there in this booth, that's sort of like a rounded booth and it has like that sparkly red upholstery that's, you know, vaguely retro. Yeah. There's a jukebox sure. in the corner. And- uh, We're in costume, right? Oh yes, you're all in costume, and yeah. you notice there are many other people here in costume, even in the awesome. middle of the night. Uh, and uh, Walter Mathis just sort of like stares at you guys, and he's like, "You told them to come to Capeless Capers. Why would you tell them to come to Capeless Capers? But where are they gonna know where to send the bill? I'm not getting the bill. You no. said you were covering my property damage. That was the agreement." Right, but they don't need to know that. That's the thing. What they you shouldn't tell me know that? that. It's my fault, Mr. Mathis. I, I'm really new to this, and all these people are, you know, they're, they're much better at this than me. I'll, I'll try to do better next time. So it sounds it like we're going to have to move. I am going to have to move. I got to move out of the mall. The mall was great business, and I'm going to have to break the lease. Do you know how much that's going to be? That's going to be crazy credits. Oh my God. Do you need me to help with that? If you would, yes. But I really need that one to help and points at the giant bird lady. <laughs> because you're the one that announced it. I don't I don't I don't mean to step on toes, but I don't unless have toes. You, unless you of course. unless you change the name of your business, they're still gonna find you. Even if you move your shop. I know! That's such a problem. I gotta figure this out. <clears throat> So you're going to guy. change the uh, icons on all your letterheads and with, your business with... cards. I know a I sign guy. Really... Just change the name of the business. That seems a lot easier. Uh, I don't, you I don't have enemies that'll happened. track you down? Or loved ones who are in danger? I'm, I mean, not really as such, no. Oh. Well, that's Maybe good. we should start a charter. I think we need rules, codes of conduct. Like, this stuff should be spelled out. You know, we need organization, strict discipline. I am not finding really anything. Really, it's your fault for not making it more clear. You know what? Fine, it's my fault. Just get what you're gonna get and we'll figure the next part out. And um, right about as he says this, there's this uh, waitress and she has a little name tag that says Beverly. And you know that the diner's called Bev's. Um, but uh, she uh, she sort of uh, comes over and she's wearing this like pink dress that has like a collar and it's got like a couple buttons and everything. And she looks very like almost Southern waitress to you. She's like, so uh, what do you have? What's the most unhealthy thing on the menu? Uh, the most unhealthy thing on the menu or the most healthy thing off the menu? And she kind of gives you a wink. Uh, how about both? So uh, we have uh, our nachos, our loaded nachos are loaded with everything, but if you really want the experience for the nachos, get the nacho burger. Now how about both? Okay, I like this one, I like him. And you see Walter Mathis kind of grumbling about the fact that you're getting two things. <laughs> Do you um, have a freshly killed small mammal? I mean, we got some coons in the back. I could try. That would be amazing. 
I mean, it doesn't hey, even technically boy. have to be dead. I can, I can take care of that. We need some dead coons out here. <laughs> and You're definitely you see, going like, to get rabies. A, a couple of patrons just kind of look. Um, what about the other bird one? Uh, what do you? Don't want? carnivore shame me. <laughs> um, apple pie, black coffee. Okay, you're not really a bird then, are you, sweetie? No. Oh, okay, okay. I wasn't sure. I mean, you kind of got a theme going on here with, like, two birds and, like, he, he's a leaf, I guess. That means he's, like, some kind of tree. I don't know what's going on with this one or that one. Um, But, uh, I, I mean, I'm sure you got a theme. Maybe you're an egg. You're, you you got a lot of, like, you know, pastel white. And, um, Me? I don't know. Um, oh, anyway, when she, uh, I'll, I'll, when she says that, I'm like, oh, I can do a lot more than that, and you know, like make my suit sort of just like scintillate, and, like. Do ooh, oh, you're one of you those. Not like small children. children. I got you. You're like a bug man, right? I'm still workshopping it, but right now I'm going by nightlight. Oh, okay, okay, and that's why you're out at night. That makes perfect sense. Keep you safe right. in the dark. So, uh, uh, maybe, uh, what, what, what would you like, hon? I like to eat light, so I'll have a heart smart platter. Okay, um, you know everything here is coated in butter, right? Um, even the salad? Oh, yeah, that's the base for our dressing. <laughs> All right, I'll have a salad with the dressing on the side, uh, light dressing if you have it, and a cherry soda. Okay, um, more! You need to make up some dressing without the butter. <laughs> Thanks, Beverly. And what about you? Ooh, okay, you, you're, you're, a, you're a tall drink of water. What do you want? Uh, and she coffee, black, decaf. 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 So uninterested. No, I don't, I don't do any stimulants, and I don't do any butter products. Uh, I don't think I can really eat anything on your menu, so I'll just stick with the decaf black. Oh, Are you on the carnivore diet, diet like me? Well, yeah, I do like I like I do like some protein. Uh, I like it cooked though, and especially in shake form. Okay. Um. Well, we could blend a burger for you in the blender with some milk. But nah, that's okay. I'll just stick to the coffee for now. Okay. Um, when she walks away, I'll pull out a protein bar. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you see just Walter Mathis holding his head. This I am really already planning on like pickpocketing his protein bars and replacing them with something unhealthy later. <laughs> <laughs> I got some suggestions for you. Mmm, some ed edibles. <laughs> Oh, so, uh, you find out anything about this new villain? Uh, he, he looked kind of like that old guy that used to do the, the, what you call, the old man that taught the weather, whatever. You mean that tried to talk the weather? Yeah, <laughs> or, or for, forecast, yeah, that's the one. Is that now, did I have a super villain name? Was, was that our first team up? I'll put my hand out, like, on the table. So, Steven, like, did, I, did I know that that was, you know, yeah. Arthur? Oh, oh yeah, Albert, absolutely. Albert, yeah, sorry, you, yeah. You knew that was him, because he, he yelled at you about taking his job. He yelled mm -hmm. he yelled about the uh, the uh, corrupt exec, a.k.a. Right. Blake Smith. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that was, uh, you know, that unfunny big guy who... Try to talk the weather. Oh, I saw him the other day. He was roughing up some, or trying to rough up some guy in, in the suit store, in the thrift store the other day. Yeah, I remember. That's seeing. usually my beat. I must have been off fighting crime at the time. I didn't see that. Yes. Was anybody, I was anybody hurt? Anyway. Stop, citizen. And they stopped. <laughs> you, you were there, were too? I'm pretty hard to miss. Yeah, you you definitely hit my radar. In fact, that was, uh, I was actually planning on giving that invite to somebody else, but then I saw you there and you really took those reins and you acted like a proper hero. You, you got the lingo at least. 
from my mythical forefathers. Your, your mythical forefathers. All right. Um, did did she, you oh, have God. you have four dads. She had from an edit window. Oh. oh, you mean ah? Okay, ancestors. Got it. Of my people. Oh, all right. I, I mean, I could see how that could have been interpreted as four dads. I guess maybe. Takes a village. Oh. So, I'm, I'm like, your powers are magical in nature? I am magic. You are magic. I believe that. I, th I think you're going to be the magic that holds the team together. Have you been uh, yes. op I have big claws. I can hold you all <laughs> in my big claws and carry you when I'm really big. <clears throat> can you grow bigger than that? I mean, you got pretty big. I can get bigger. It depends on my vessel's power and how they grow and develop. I can get bigger. You that's, got a vessel? That's pretty impressive. Yes, I am a mythical creature of my forefathers. I don't just like walk around all the time. I have to have a vessel. I mean, it's sure. Uh, hey, look, uh, the, uh, the patron, not me, the one that uh, contacted me in the first place, he gave me these items so Y'all can distribute these how you want. Um, the first one, uh, I don't even know where he got this, and he holds up this like stone octagon disc that um, it, it has a, a sigil that looks sort of like a red lion with a white mane on it. And he's like, "This might be magic. I don't know. Do you? Would you be interested in this? That has the the language of my people on it. Give it to me." All right, and he gives you the uh, strange talisman. Uh, and, and then he uh, like pulls it's out a gold medal a, that she just won. He pulls out a, uh, a projectile gun. And this one looks like it's loaded with um, three heavy uh, balls. And it has um, like string attached to it. And it's a bola gun. Oh, that's neat. That, that, keep that oh, no, I was... I, Watch, it's all me. Up, watch where you point that. Well, I guess it like it can tangle people up and stuff. Do, do one of y'all want this? I am very familiar with the technique, if you wouldn't mind. All right. Can oh, you just hands not you the gun. point that anywhere near me? Me and my avian people have traumatic memories of nets. So just oh, yeah. oh, don't oh, point just that like, near me. In the coat. And, uh, Thank you for respecting this. my boundaries. This is a nice little contraption, and it's just looks almost like an egg, actually. And it has like it looks like an egg timer with like the little twisty bit in the middle. He's like, you twist this, you throw it, and it makes a big bright bang. Oh, I like the sound of that. Mind if I say that? That seems right you up go. your alley. Yeah. And he hands it off to you, so sure. you have a flash bomb. Ooh. You have all the items available for the Abitza party that you want to have. This could questionably be unethical. Uh, just a little, uh, a little pill right here. This dissolves real quick in food and water, and it will uh, put someone to sleep if they consume it. That sounds somewhat interesting. All right. And he hands you the sleeping pill. I'm going to take it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's this? <laughs> yeah, there's no guarantee that it's going to be used on a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> I played with you. <laughs> oh. And then he pulls out this box, and it's completely black. And it has, like, a little clasp that keeps it closed. And he opens it very discreetly and sort of shows it to you guys while shielding it as much as he can with his hands. And he's like, do y'all know what this is? No. This is from back before the disappearance. This is called Shift. It's an injected drug that can enhance your powers for a brief time, but it kind of makes you crash. I just they snatched never it got out it of right. his hands and handed it over to Wyndham. <laughs> Is that something you said it's like, like some kind of illegitimate stuff? Rumor has it that the government 
tried to enhance the supers that worked for them. Oh. And uh, did, they could never quite get the formula right. So it hit the streets and it was called shift on the slide. I don't know what the technical term is. Sure. It's kind of been lost. You're saying Who's shift talking? or yeah. shiv? Shift. Shift. Big shift. Nightlife. Shift. Dead. Don't do drugs. Uh, I've never. What? <laughs> what? Why? Up with hope. Down with dope. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much this team's gonna work out. <laughs> it's okay, some of us are cool. <laughs> so, um, uh, Blowhard, did you did you want those pills in? And I'll, you know, kind of. Blowhard does go. not partake of substances, nor does it condone it. Does does Blowhard condone anyone else taking substances either? Matter of fact, you're just trying to fill a void deep inside, and you're filling it with the wrong stuff. It's never gonna get filled. Are you, you volunteering? Stuff in your body. Um, Can you I mean, just take yeah. the shift? I, I gave it to Wyndham. Winda. <laughs> Is this stuff still yeah, floating yeah. around on the street? I mean, that sounds like it could be dangerous. I mean, it's More here fun. and there. <laughs> but you see, a lot of times the, when the they take it, they just do what they're going to do. Like, they're villains in the world, man. You know how it is. Just like there's these heroes out in here, and he kind of like gestures around to the like four patrons that are there. Yeah, are, are they any, known there... heroes too? Like, what uh, is anybody? Yes. Out of so there. Oh are God, am I getting heroes. any like side eye? <laughs> um, you are getting a little bit of like side eye from uh, one person in particular. Uh, she's this. Uh, she has. She's wearing a uh, white leotard with long pink gloves and boots. She has her hair kind of like styled off to the side in these this like bunch of curls that just hang over, and um, she has this emblem on her chest that looks almost like an explosion. Ooh. Uh, Who is I take it? it I have uh, danced with this one before. Uh, you may very well have, in fact. Um, give me a, give me a, a roll, uh, just okay. do, just do a d20 roll. We'll see if you encountered her. 14. 14. Yeah. You, you've encountered her. Uh, her name is Bombshell and, um, she's notorious. Really? Yes. Uh, she's, uh, she makes explosives with her hands, just generates explosive little orbs. However, she has never been great at controlling their potency. So uh, that's how she ended up on the B list. <laughs> so I'm just I'm just gonna like give her a little finger wave and smile cheekily. Well, I, she can't see me smiling. It doesn't matter, but I do smile. give her a little finger wave. <laughs> so, but you know what? You smile anyway. I do, so I know, I'll boom know. Boom from the New Mutants. Yeah, very similar, <laughs> very similar. With do less you control. Have a <laughs> sure. Best friends. I thought we were best friends. We are best friends. You can have more oh. than one best friend. But <laughs> so you fought crime with her before? Something crime like that. Crime was fought. Sure. Crime was fought. <laughs> <caught. laughs> awesome. <laughs> and uh, she? Do you keep looking at her? Occasionally, just to make sure she's still just as annoyed as she was when I walked in. <laughs> okay. She gets up off of her bar stool and approaches all of you. Hi, my so, uh, friend. Be, be cool. Since when are villains running around with heroes? Oh, we're Let friends. Us. You know that this diner is for heroes, honey. Magpie just helped us thwart a, a, a villainous weatherman. Oh, did they now? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, I'm, I'm light, light. And and you see this like very like satisfied smirk spread across her lips. And she just kind of leans into the table and she's like, You're doing heroics now? You know, it's funny that you think that going and stopping one weatherman from messing with the weather that was also inconveniencing me counts as an act of heroics. You did risk yourself to save that station manager, though, Magpie. Was that really Self a risk? Self-sacrifice. Oh. Excuse me, ma'am. You seem yes. to have a very big mean girl energy for someone who's supposed to be a good guy. 
Make a uh, check to intimidate, into it, or otherwise interact with her in a lawful way. <laughs> I don't know. If you have anything that applies to interaction, let me know. What's the skill check? Um, you're going to have to face a challenge of three. So you got to roll a nine or higher on a d20. That is a nine. A nine meets beats. So there you go. Um, so uh, you can intuit that she definitely had the mean girl energy when she was younger. And now she's kind of like in her mid twenties and has kind of evolved into like a member of society that's like, she enjoys the fact that she's got her villain now doing heroics. Like, it's less of a mean girl thing and more of a mean girl towards a villain thing. Like, like this you is peak in high school. school. Yeah, very much like high school. <laughs> oh, no, that, that was I see. Oh, you're, ask, you're asking if she's been to high school? If she peaked. <laughs> oh. Peaked in high school. Oh, okay. Um, She kind of looks at you and she's like, oh, uh, well, I mean... If I told you that, I would reveal my identity. I wear this mask for a or reason. Or your age. Smooth. I well, am just like over here on the other side of the table, like dying. My beak is like on the like on the surface of the table. I'm trying not to laugh loudly. <laughs> you know, I think that uh, this would be awful nice if we could just kind of chill on this. I don't know everyone's past. I don't know yours. I don't know theirs. But this here lady is done right by us this evening. That's why she's sitting here. Okay. Okay. I'll play. And she kind of gives Walter a knowing glance and she's like, I'll be by later, honey. We'll talk. And she just kind of like saunters away. And you see Walter sort of like avert his gaze. So are you two, uh... I, I knew her a while back. I see. So, uh, we, why we, didn't we, that one... We estranged. So why didn't that one make the cut? I mean, I've never been to any kind of establishment like this one, but why go for, for us if there's... I'll just kind of point around others. Yeah, who are the other <laughs> heroes here? Uh, um, so, uh, as, as Walter sort of, like, answers your question when done, he's like, um, well, so you remember how I said one of the infats was supposed to go to someone else? I just saw someone else that seemed about equally as capable with a little less drama potential. So, uh, and he sort of nudges his head, head toward, um, Elang. And uh, when for you, uh, Blowhard, you look around and you see that uh, there are some uh, what looked like uh, strange deadbeat kind of heroes. Uh, you see this one dude, he has like a normal body. He, he looks maybe a little less athletic than you would have pictured, but he has like a mushroom for a head. And, cool. and um, you see... Uh, there is, uh, in the corner, there is a big blue ox fellow with, like, a ponytail mane, and he's eating with a masked bear humanoid. Wow. And, um, you see this lady, um, off to the side as well, and she's, uh, she seems to be helping with the diner, but she's wearing a mask. And you notice that she's dressed very similarly to Beverly, except she looks like a superhero. Super Beverly. So, what is the uh, what is the the mushroom guy's deal? Uh, has have we heard of him? Um, yeah. So his name is uh the uh spore, <laughs> and he makes these uh these powdery clouds, but unfortunately they have sort of random effects, and he can't really control them. Sometimes people seize up, sometimes they die, and that's not super great for a hero's image, usually. Hmm. <laughs> Do they see why you didn't choose him? Yeah, uh, 
we, we would like to keep Killen off the table if at all possible. And he sort of shoots a quick glance to Magpie when he says that. You have my word. Excuse me, I have never killed anyone. And she's not even lying. She steals a lot of stuff, but she doesn't kill people. <laughs> oh my God, I've been wondering that the whole time. Thank you. <laughs> I was, wasn't sure. I mean, you hear things, you know, on the street. No, that's all right. It's good to have a reputation. If people think I'm a stone cold killer, then they don't bother me. Is that the secret? Yeah, absolutely. I won't tell anybody. So, when Water got us together, like he's did he tell us that he wanted us to find the other heroes? Um, he mentioned that he's trying to do that. Well. He more mentioned that you're expected to protect people and things. Um. He, he he sort of like looks at all of you and he says, I've got a job, but it's going to need to wait till the weekend. So tomorrow's Friday. Live out your day. And if you come back Friday night, then I'll know you're interested and you're part of the team. And uh, I'll tell you about what the weekend plan is. And it could potentially be quite lucrative. And he leans in when he says that. I, I look over uh-huh. to Elan. Elan. I'm like, mm, maybe. <laughs> We're costly. Huh. In the in the meantime, though, uh, there are some strange murmurings and goings on at that TV station. That was not the first strange thing I've heard about it. So, really, I don't know if any of you have an in or not, but it might not be a bad idea to check. I it might out. have a way to get inside on the on the DL. What did you have in mind, Mr. Mathis? Well, um, so reports, my reports, my uh, contacts have mentioned to me that uh, there have been a lot of suspicious folks going in and out of that TV station. Really? uh, Specifically to talk to some of the upper management. And I'm a little curious of what that's all about. Well, I... uh... I might have know a guy that I might be able to get some intel from. Right. Um, I'm not sure you're going to be able to fit that one in. And he points that along. I am very bad at hiding. I've noticed. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I think by, t- by when we meet tomorrow night, I might be able to find out something at least between now and then. In All fact, right. I'm going to like check the t- is it Is it like really late or early, um, I guess? It- it's getting about 1 a.m. at this point. I'm not surprised. TV is completely ruining our youth. It just totally Who even watches TV anymore? I mean, there's a novelty to it, I suppose. Um, a- as far as the rest of you are concerned, I did manage to swing these. And he produces uh, two visitor's badges. He's like, I don't know what to do with these, so y'all are going to have to decide who's going to use these, but... And he slides them across the table. Not necessary uh, for me. I've got an in. I, think I am very the right bad people, at hiding. Mr. <laughs> you don't need to hide if you have this. And I hand, I take one of the badges and hand it over. I mean, Winda said he already knows a guy. I guess that just leaves me and you needing the badges. <laughs> I am here to visit the TV station. <laughs> Keep practicing that. And I'm sure that you might encounter somebody dumb enough to believe you. <laughs> hey, uh, well, amidst all this, I'm going to look around. Do they have like, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, is there like A-listers or anybody that has like their own sandwich or anything? So um, they do have a series of menu items that are the combo menus that are named after A-listers. Okay. And, um, and and so you can see the whole list. And weirdly enough, Vanessa Helsing, who is the main hero for this town, is like at the very bottom of the list. Hmm. And it, she likes a rare steak. Okay. And eggs. That's, that's, that's not on the nose or anything. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> And uh, the, the the tagline is um, so fresh it's just been shot with a crossbow. <laughs> uh, does it come with a novelty steak? 
It probably does. It's a steak with a steak. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and your food eventually arrives and you guys can partake and the night goes with Walter more or less dealing with your shenanigans. Yeah. And uh, uh, I would try to get out of there not long after that and make an excuse. Okay. Aileen continues to act normal for a second and then totally bird wrapped it out and rips okay. up the dead raccoon. Despite you know, Windows' totally small like, frame, he manages right to... Yeah. Despite Windows, you know, uh, rather small frame, he manages to house, you know, all, all the food that is brought. Mm -hmm. And you see it's actually like a burger, like a triple burger with nachos on top of it. And the nachos are just kind of spilling out onto the sides around the plate. And there's like jalapenos and olives and stringy cheese and liquid cheese and all sorts of mm. peppers and tomatoes. And there's like dollops with sour cream, different places. And it's just like a mess. I know that's but an also abomination, delicious. but I want to eat that now. And I, <laughs> I like describing okay. my food. Don't touch me. I love food. <laughs> yeah, I can find a picture of that as well. Um, my Lord, when the... You're not going to have to worry about super villains. Your arteries are going to clog up faster than faster than you are. Heart disease nope. is the number one super villain in the country. I uh, I still feel lighter than air. Can I can, can I convince you to the carnivore diet and like waves like half of a raccoon leg in your direction <laughs> <laughs> with a bit of the fur still like? No, oh man, that's I, definitely I, not you know, sanitary. <laughs> I, I I couldn't uh, couldn't say no. I, I I couldn't you know ignore all of this. Point towards the uh, the the all of the extra stuff that are lingering on the edges as he's kind of like scooping up and making sure that all the all the sour cream and all the melted cheese still gets consumed. Mm, nice. Just looking at the dead raccoons makes Blowhard pull out Purell and start dousing himself <laughs> with it. <laughs> how my grandmother behaves at the dinner table. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you guys eventually uh, make your ways home. And uh, as Magpie walks through the front door, um, you know, to your dark apartment, you, uh, I don't know if you flick on the light or if you just see in the dark. Oh, I see in the dark. I mean, vampires, what are you gonna right. do? And uh, you see this enormous crocodile with a uh, cybernetic bowler hat strapped to his head with like a chin strap. And he's he's just got one leg crossed over the other as well as a crocodile can reading a book. And he looks up at you. Well, on to you home early for a change. Just a pit stop. Well, uh, you know, I was watching the television earlier, and uh, <laughs> anymore. No, there was, there was the strangest thing on the telly. It what me not wanting to get wet? It seems as though there was a certain birdie performing heroics. <laughs> yeah, you go ahead and laugh. Is but, you that know, what we've stooped to? I'm sorry. Are you telling me you wanted it to snow all over the place? I know for a fact um, that you would be just as cross as I would if we got snowed in. And you see that his whole mouth is just kind of like, as he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought. And I'm just going to flop you. down on the couch. Well, at any rate, I'm off to bed. Do you need a bath before I get in bed? Nah, I'm good. I had one last night. All right. And he sort of like slides out and lands on all fours and just waddles into the bathroom and climbs in the tub. And I make the mistake of Googling myself to make sure that he's the only one doing that and find out he's not the only one doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Leo, mm -hmm. do you think your parents are the sort that would be worried about you being out after 1 a.m.? Yeah. Yeah, he's got okay. like a kind of an overprotective mother. His dad, maybe not as as much. Now he's indifferent, but the mom would be more overprotective. 
But I would try to sneak in and use my distortion ability as necessary to make myself. Then you need to make me a stealth roll, good sir. Okay. Uh, what's the difficulty? Uh, that is going to be, we're going to say it's a difficulty of five. Okay. So you got to make it or better. If I, I, can I use, if I use my distortion ability, which basically just like, doesn't make you invisible the way it describes it just like make, bends the light away from you so you're like shadowy. Would that help? Okay. Yes, I'll it would. That, that, it would. That, some... that would give you, um, is that a power you have or is yeah. that one of your power shifts? It's uh, just a power. Okay, like then that would give you an edge. Okay. So that would make it down to four, which means after all 12 and above. And this is a speed test? Um, yes, it is a speed test, in fact. Man, I'll, I'll spend the points, uh, the effort to uh, try and succeed on that. So that takes three of that because not three. So I got to roll nine or higher. Come on, glass die. Fourteen. Mm-hmm. So uh, you got a fourteen. You succeed. So um, yeah, and they just live in a suburban, like two-story house. Um, he would try, try to climb in from to his bedroom window, like a tree yep. outside. And you see your mother is sitting in the living room, like she's conked out, like she was mm-hmm. staying up for you, but the lights are still on. Oh. And, um, uh, then I will uh, get my super suit concealed uh, and go down there and just sort of like, uh, you know, wake her up and, uh, you know, just tell her like, oh, you know, ma'am. I'm, I'm sorry, I was working on a school project really late. It's due tomorrow. Uh, oh! Who? Where I came in a while ago, but you looked so comfortable there. I just didn't want to bother you. I was going to oh, be... Oh, you're right. Well, right. so. oh, just be safe, all right, honey? Oh, you know me. That's my number one priority. All right. All right. You're a good boy. And she kind of, yeah. like, pats you on the cheek. Thanks, ma'am. All right. Good night. Good night. And, and then I would proceed to actually stay up later because I do have an assignment due tomorrow. Okay. And, uh, I'll, you know, I know we didn't really get to work on it too well, but uh, Katie did say that she was going to write something up, so I'll just try to work on like a quick <laughs> little uh, weather display experiment to go along with, uh, you know, whatever few details I remember of what we did to discuss we were going to do because mm-hmm. we didn't actually in game talk about right. it. And so, Katie, in fact, as you get home, what does your home look like? What does your home life look like? Are your parents waiting up for you? Uh, no, they aren't. But the house looks like a normal suburban house, except one of the walls has been blown out and been okay. covered by like a temporary fix because the insurance mm-hmm. claim hasn't come through yet because it can't really be explained how a giant bird mm-hmm. crashed into the house. And okay. then got confused and then ran away. Um, so she has returned to her normal form. Her parents are just kind of used to her, like staying up at the library, whatever, doing what she what she does. She's a good girl, mm-hmm. you know, invisible. Mm-hmm. Not as great as her older siblings, who are like, you know, the true results of tiger parents and absolutely excel at everything and are mm-hmm. amazing. Um, so all there, I'm in bed. So their parents, their parents are like, oh yeah, Katie will be home when Katie gets home. So, um, quick question for you then. You have older siblings. How many siblings? Two. Two, okay. Um, so I need you to make a stealth roll. Your difficulty is going to be six because I imagine among that group of a family, there has to be one light sleeper. Mm-hmm. Um, so I am have an inability for sneaking and staying quiet. <laughs> okay. So that means it bumps it up to a seven, which is technically impossible. So, so I you're going to have to spend some, some effort. To, huh? Yes, I will have to spend some points mm-hmm. to do that. Is this like a speed? Yep. Great. I've got so many points in that too. Uh, mm. But you can only spend up to one level of effort. So you can okay. only bring it down to an 18. Because you guys are tier one. Amazing. Mm-hmm. So I reduce my pool by three. Is it? Mm-hmm. 
Oh, I, don't, I technically don't have time in game to do a long rest. The 10 hour rest before school. Could... No, I'm not going to use my auto succeed on this one. Okay. All right. So I find it uh, more fun when it happens in the middle of a group situation. Okay. So, uh, so you actually fail then. <laughs> I got a right? 19. Oh, you got a 19. You succeed because you spent the effort. So you succeed. So, and you get an effect, a minor effect. Ooh. So what do you want your minor effect to be? Um, what are the minor effects that you can have? You just got to make one up. What is something beneficial that you think would happen? because you succeeded so well at sneaking. Um, that Katie has figured out the like most efficient path. Okay. To sneak around so, her family's sleeping house. It makes it a little bit easier for her next time she wants to sneak in the house. Okay, that's fair, that's fair. All right. So uh, next time you're sneaking through your family's house, you get an edge. Hmm. And uh, then next we have Winda. So what does Kiefer's house look like or home? Uh, so like it's a you know, small you know, one one bedroom apartment, uh, very, very disheveled. There's, uh, you know, not, nothing is neat. Nothing is, is put away. The only thing that would be properly clean and organized is the brand new suit that he had bought earlier, the day, earlier in the day. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's still wrapped in the wrapper with the, the staple and the receipt tape to it, uh, so that it is in good condition for when he needs to wear it to work tomorrow. And you know, he's got a, a sheet of paper next to it that there was some rough ideas for gimmicks and concepts for what he's supposed to, you know, what he could kind of pitch or try out for uh, his deal tomorrow. But it's a utter crapshoot as to whether or not he'll remember to bring it with him. Okay. Okay. Um, does he have anybody with him at home? Does not. Okay. No pets or nothing. No, no pets. No pets. All right. So Kiefer yeah, just know. gets a nice quiet night at home. And uh, finally, Johnny Silver. What does Johnny Silver's home look like? It doesn't so have Johnny Silver's to... home looks very much like a karate dojo in a mall. <laughs> he like pulls out a sleeping bag that he lays oh. on the floor because like his dojo is always full and he's got plenty of students. But the thing is, a lot of them he trains for free because they don't have money and he doesn't really like tell anybody about that um but he does he does have like a mascot that wasn't around earlier uh a black and white cat named yin yang um that that greets him when he comes in and <laughs> and he you know any you know he goes and puts some food and fresh water in a, in a couple bowls underneath of his his desk in the office i mean he doesn't really need a place it's got a you know there's a locker room there's showers I, you know, he just needs a place to lay his head at night, and he's fine. I stole okay. from this guy. <laughs> the emotional <laughs> self-justification that everything is okay. Is <laughs> yeah. It's fine. It's fine. I was just <laughs> picturing, like, an empty spot on his wall where it looked like, you know, there was something hanging there square, and then you cut to, like, magpies. It's like some, you know, Chinese scroll thing that's, like, <laughs> you know, like, fades of it. And she's just like, yeah. I stole from that guy. <laughs> so, yeah. Of, of course, of yeah. course, Yin Yang is thrilled to see you and is doing that figure eight thing between your legs as you come in, you know, um, and it just sort of like, you know, they do biscuits on your chest when you lay down, all that, because the, the kitty likes to sleep on you and uh, everyone has a peaceful night's rest. The morning comes. The uh, morning feels maybe a bit rushed to some, maybe a slower to others. And Leo and Katie find yourselves standing in a line just outside the buses after you have driven to the television station for awesome. your field trip. 
and Miss Legrand, this uh, incredibly fashionable lady who's vaguely like Miss Frizzle, currently has her eye makeup set up so that one eye looks like it's done with yellow and it looks like a sun, and the other one looks like it's cloudy and it has like some droplets like tears <laughs> or rain. And she has like a dress with all different weather patterns on it. And she starts pointing these, once again, immaculately done nails as she's pointing to children. She's like, lab partners get together. And, uh, oh, Katie Lampley over here. You really brought the razzle dazzle today, Mrs. Lagrange, or Ms. Lagrange. It's Lagrand. Thank you. I know you are the epitome of understatement, child. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, everyone stay with your buddy. You may convene in the lobby and look around. Do not touch. I swear, Billy, if I see you eating anything, you're going home. <laughs> she like starts yelling at people, but more or less, you guys are free to kind of roam within the confines of what they've set up with signage. Hmm. Um, meanwhile- He's holding uh, a book. Of course. <laughs> Sorry, okay. Um, and Kiefer, you have shown up in your three-piece suit, I presume. Um, and in my in my three piece dude uh, so what what would you say would be the difficulty of remembering that slip of paper uh remembering the slip of paper yes um, I don't even remember it <laughs> like a three all right not difficult uh, so, so I've got an I've got an inability towards uh, uh concentration so I'm gonna bump <laughs> that to a four uh-huh but He's I rolled a 15 on the himself. die, so <laughs> All right. apparently Kiefer was on point this the this morning. You know, with his you know fresh uh fresh pot of coffee, so he can actually get up and get moving. Uh, extra extra bounce in his step, if you will. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got his suit, he's got his, his his slip of paper, and he's got you know some kind of inkling that he's supposed to snoop around and find out what kind of weird shit is going around his office. Mm hmm Yep. Okay. Um, you are waiting through a sea of children at the moment as you're trying to get to the entrance. Well, I'll, uh, you know, kind of just, you know, kind of sneak around, push push around, uh, like not, not shove or any of that kind of nonsense. Uh, just like, you know, hold up the, you know, I work here badge kind of nonsense. Mm hmm. Yep. That's easy enough to do. And the security guards sort of try to like herd the children away from your path so that you can kind of get through the sea of um, high schoolers and hormones. And like there's like three couples making out in the corner where it's pretty easy to miss if you're not paying attention. Um, uh, what is what is Johnny Silver doing this morning? So I guess, you know, I have that badge. Uh, and uh, I'm going to pull out, like, the one suit that I have. Uh, mm -hmm. It might be a little bit outdated. I haven't worn it in a while. So and you got I'm head down to the weather station. Okay. So you head down to the weather station. You see there are throngs of teenagers pouring into this television station. And um, you you spot this uh, weatherman or, or like this. You, you see Kiefer going into the building sort of wading through the children. He seems to have found the best path. Um, and the guards, once again, will clear for you too as they uh, notice your badge and they just assume you're with the kids. Yeah. Do, we, do we notice him? Um, give me a perception check. Uh, All or, right. What is a perception or, check? Or anything. <laughs> yeah, just, I know. Just, it's, like, it's, an intellect, it's an intellect such, check. It's just you are good at certain types of things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it's a skill you can be trained. It's a, things, it's noticing like a, things, whatever yeah. you want to call the, it. What's the difficulty? Uh, we are going to say that it is a difficulty of, well, you know, Johnny Silver's pretty loud, so we're going to say it's only a two. <laughs> yep, no He's problem. Well, to be reckoned with. So, so yeah, I'm not going to make a scene, but I will uh, sort of like whisper to Katie, be like, you see the guy over there? It's Johnny Silver. Oh, he, he works across from my dad. I give you a life tip. What's up? If you're gonna go and be a superhero, don't show someone your uniform the day before. I didn't reveal my identity to anybody, I don't think. 
No, you showed me your whole costume. Yeah. You, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. That's right. You um, pointedly showed her your costume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. I forgot my bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I but I don't know toast. Johnny. I don't know Johnny Silver is blowhard, right? Right. Technically, okay. you don't know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I want to wave towards Kiefer. Hey, hey, buddy, you were the guy rolling in the uh, in the thrift store the other day. You okay? Hey, what? Yeah, <laughs> yesterday. It was just yesterday. You were brawling with that guy. I was brawling with no one. No, I saw you. You threw him into well, the racks and everything. Uh, I I never laid a hand on him. He tried to punch me, but he's... Well, that's he's right. Yeah, he, just, he, didn't do, he didn't do so well. He's, he's just big and doesn't know, how, doesn't know how to control himself. <laughs> Were you here yesterday with all that commotion? I work here. I was here during the day. Yeah, I saw something on the news. Uh, I mean, I saw something last night about, uh, you know, some kerfuffle or whatnot. Do you smell something? <laughs> Coffee? Yeah, maybe. That maybe that's it. How long? How, are you? So how long you been, How long have you worked here? Uh, a few years. Is is this a good yeah. gig? Uh, I'll I'll find out today. Uh, today I got my my new digs. I'm uh, supposed to actually be replacing that uh, that dude. That's why he was somewhat upset about. Oh yeah, thing. I'd be pissed at you too if you stole my job. That sucks. Uh, I, I didn't steal it. Just, well, I mean, he doesn't have it anymore, and you do have it. It's kind of like you took his job. I didn't ask for it. Honestly, mm. didn't want it. So why'd but, you uh, take it? Because uh, the boss said, uh, uh, hey, he's out. You're in. They escorted the guy out. What am I supposed to do if, uh, you know, they say here, you, you get a you get a job, you get more money. That dude's gone. And, and like that guy's been on the air for, for a, a while, right, Steven? Yes. Yep. He's been the weatherman for like a good, like, seven years oh wow yeah that guy's been here like a decade say so i mean I he's been around a long time that's a shame i feel bad for that guy does, he, right. have a, does he get a family like a wife and kids or anything we weren't uh shall we say talking friends uh, well, I mean, I guess at least you got a promotion out of it. What brings you into the station? Uh, I thought I'd come in, drop a resume off, uh, you know, see if you guys were hiring. Apparently, you need people because, you know, you just let someone go. I no, mean, I was... who's doing your job now? <laughs> like, what uh, well, did he do? <laughs> well, that, that's the real uh, crux of it. I got to do my job and his job. Oh, man. Hey, that's how they get you, man. That's, you know, I was kind of just looking for a part-time thing because I already, I already actually run a business. And I was hoping maybe if I get in like a TV station, I can slip in some advertising, you know, boost my business a little bit. That's why That's why I've been self-employed for a long time, ever since I got out of the Army. You're a military-minded folk, huh? Well, I mean, you know, after I graduated high school, I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. And so, you know, I, I joined the army and did that for a while. And, uh, you know, and that's that's where I discovered my true passion. You know, now now I teach karate. You should come down. You should come down to my dojo sometime. I mean, you got some slick moves on the defense side, but I can teach you some offense. <laughs> what would I need with offense for? You think I'm going to be starting punching people? Well, you know, you, you know, you can't defend. You can't just use def defense all the time. Eventually, they're going to yeah. back you up, and you're going to have to fight back. What if there was like ten of those guys? What would you've done? Probably got my ass handed to me. Not with Iron Wolverine Karate, you wouldn't. You should definitely come down. I'll give you a free you, lesson. You, you, you telling me that if you know, ten dudes like that were coming after you, you'd be fine? Absolutely. I've been doing this a long time. 
Uh, I imagine this is kind of, you know, they're not, he's not shouting, but it's like, you know, we're in a big lobby, right? So just yeah. milling oh, about. Yeah, so yeah, you, yeah, you, you could, you, you could hear what they were saying, right? And yeah, I yeah. figure this is all like while we're in queue trying to like move forward. Mm -hmm. um, Look at the boomers argue. I, I'm gonna, um, <laughs> do we, do we have like, you know, what we would think of as like modern day cell phones in this setting? And stuff like uh, yes, you do. Oh. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, get mine out and like film those two talking and be like, Mr. Silver, give us a quick demo. <laughs> As I'm just you know, like, and I'm like, this guy's great, everybody. He's a, he's a karate master. Well, I'm so not really dressed for it, but if you come down to the dojo, I'd be more than happy to give you and your friends a, a demo. And what dojo is that? Uh, Iron Wolverine do dojo down at the down at the mall. Sounds great, and you're 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 taking new students now. Always, I, lo I love to shape young minds and mold young people, and to help them build character. Awesome! Discipline. Can you just show us one move real quick? He'll do like a spinning like jump kick and like kick above Windows head. And I'll like cheer like, all right, thanks, Mr. Silver. <laughs> and then I'll step in. Do you want to roll to make sure I don't kick Windows in the head? <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> so I actually, uh, I actually three. am trained in jumping. Oh, very, okay. Very specific. So I guess, so I, I believe that gives me an asset. Uh, what is the what is the challenge? So the difficulty would be three. Except here, I'm going to put in a GM intrusion. Oh, nice, yes. nice. So. Uh, Basically, uh, as he's doing this, one of the kids that's making out, sort of like they roll and stumble into him. And so he moves. So you're going to increase the difficulty by uh, two points. Okay, so from so to a five? Instead of three to a five, yep. So you gotta roll a 15 or better. All right, uh, I, will, I, will, I will spend effort in order to bring that down to back down to a three okay. and that's a seven I oh. Definitely... Oh, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. okay <laughs> so um first off uh hmm. you have to give an experience point to somebody else i will give it to uh winda well, thank you uh, yeah. she's the okay. one getting kicked in the head <laughs> <laughs> and so at this point i am going to make another gm intrusion because okay. i can and this one's going to- I definitely wanted Katie. to have gotten that on, on camera though, right? Oh yes, you got yeah. it on camera. <laughs> okay, yeah. So Katie, as he kicks, he's going to either, uh, you have to choose if he's going to catch uh, Leo in the chest or is he going to dodge past him and you're going to dodge, but drop your book. Mm. I, I, I'm doing the kick towards Winda. Oh, excuse me, then Winda. So. Yeah. So he's either going to kick Winda or make you lose your book. The old man will attack a small teenage girl. <laughs> well, on, <laughs> on accident, camera. but yes. And on camera, <laughs> and she will drop her book. And when someone looks open, it's not actually her original book. It's a book uh, trying to study and find it. Actually, no, it is her book because she's trying to find the talisman in okay. the book. She's been so... doing research instead of being doing schoolwork. So can can I you know intercede a little, little bit and like I duck like even though uh -huh. he was he was like he tried to kick over my head he, I I see that he wasn't gonna get there and I uh -huh. I duck which causes him to then uh, hit you know Katie's character Katie instead uh huh well he it he, is dead. he goes over her. But so it doesn't hit her to do damage, but she has to dodge and she loses her book in the process. So it's and just a big I cluster F. <laughs> I love that though. So um, you need to give an experience point out and you get one for yourself, Del. So but I will take one for myself and I will give one to uh, Leo because oh, unfortunately hey, I cannot share the love to our mate. Oh, yeah. Because okay. she's a bad so, person. So you watch as this old man uh well not old old but like you know <laughs> middle-aged man he's like jumps. 25 old man of 35 <laughs> the young man ducks and he flies towards this child everyone gasps 
and she gets out of the way, but drops this book, it slides open, and it has this strange text. And uh, anyone who wants to can try to make a uh, notice check. We'll call it that. Mm-hmm. Sure. What would the, what's the difficulty? Uh, the difficulty is going to be a four. All right. You said a four? Yep, so a 12 or better is what you need. I have a 12. I have an 11. I got an eight. Okay, so when you do this, uh, Johnny Silver, you notice the text has a metallic sheen to it and almost seems like it glows a little bit when it opens up. So, so... He's like... <laughs> So we at least said that uh, she was, you know, it's the book she was researching that artifact, right? Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so I think that's what throws Johnny off. Like when the book falls open and she looks, he looks down and sees the thing from the other night. It's mm-hmm. kind of like distracts him and uh, he throws him off his game. Okay. Yeah, I dig that. I like that. Meanwhile, Robin, did you get yeah. my message? I can fix that in post, by the way. Oh, heck. There's lots of chat windows. Okay. Yes. Uh, give me one second to catch up. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, so go ahead and just do that for me real quick, if you don't mind. Let me know what number yeah. you get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to use effort, let me know. We are doing secret things. I know. Perfect. Doing secret things? So, um... Meanwhile, while everyone else is uh, experiencing the mayhem in the lobby, we have a uh, we have a magpie. Are you Lisa or magpie at this point? Oh, I'm Lisa at this moment. Okay, Lisa is... Um, but I'm also wearing a hoodie with the hood pulled up like real tight over my head because it's daylight. Right. Right. Um, and you're just sort of walking through this hall and um, I don't know if you're carrying anything or trying to blend in in any way. Um, but, uh, I got a box. I'm wearing okay. gloves, but they're like work gloves, you know, but if you're walking somewhere with purpose with a box, no one stops you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead and make a theatrical stealthy check. See cool. if you have anything related to either of those. 12. 12. Okay, so um, Lisa, as you... Oh, I should have told you the difficulty. I'm sorry. Um, the difficulty was three, so you made it. Um, cool. But uh, you seem to have this purpose and no one seems to notice you. And as you're going, you see what you thought was a mummy just walking into a side room just ahead of you. Can I get my phone out and snap a picture? Or is it already gone? It's already gone. I'm following. I will set my box down. It is full of plastic sunglasses. Don't ask me where I got them. I (laughs) stole them on the way here. uh, And follow the mummy. You're going to have to unravel that mystery. Um, So as you uh, round the corner into the room, you find yourself in a janitor's closet. And there is a stack of papers just chilling out in the middle of the floor like a pile and one of them sort of fluttering down into the pile. Pick that one up and see if I can catch it before it hits the ground. Okay. You catch it and it uh, looks like a standard form for uh, requisition for purchase. Does it say what of? Nope. It's, uh, It's scribbled out like someone started to write something and then scribbled it out. Cool. I'm going to fold that in half, stick it in my pocket. I'm going to look around in here and like, before I do that, just sort of like scoot the, um, the box of sunglasses into the room with me because it doesn't say what the requisition of purpose purchase was for. So I can use that to like, if I get caught in here, BS the fact that somebody Mm -hmm. bought a bunch of sunglasses. Uh, Right. (laughs) Totally. (laughs) I'm going to, yeah, I'm just going to keep looking around. Yeah. Okay. Um, Give me an investigating looking around check. <laughs> All right. The di- the difficulty for this, we're going to say there's tiers of difficulty for this one because you can find some different things. So okay. um, your difficulty levels are going to be three 
four, and five. Okay. With uh, five being you find something especially useful or helpful. I would like to spend effort. Okay. And this is an intellect roll. Okay. All right. So I have got a 13 on the die. Now what do I do with... uh with intellect um so you would lower your intellect pool by however many you were going to spend cool i was gonna go with two okay well we could only spend one because we're two only spend oh okay i didn't realize that okay then one i I have an option i use it (laughs) okay you you would spend three points from your pool okay and then essentially that increases your die roll by by three okay cool yeah, okay, it's hard because the first one costs three, but then every level of effort after that costs two. But then yeah. if you have any edge, it reduces it. Yeah. The total okay, cost. so we're looking at 16 total then, or am I getting this? Yes. Yep, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Awesome. Yep. So uh, you notice that um, the papers uh, in the middle of the floor sort of seem to flutter and waft a little bit when your back is turned, almost like there's a vent or something blowing on them. Paper boy. Um, you don't see anyone around. You just see the paper moving. Okay. So um, is there a vent underneath it? Um, you do notice that there is a vent overhead. Um, in this room. I'm just I say hi to the stack of papers because you said that I saw something that looks like a mummy coming in here, and I'm just picturing a person made of paper. Like, mm-hmm. this is probably nuts, but, like, I have to try. I'm like, hello? Okay. Nothing happens. Well, I mean, if I were a person that had just been reduced to a stack of papers, I wouldn't want anyone to know it was me either. I, like, do the I'm watching you fingers and uh, continue on with what I was doing previously. Can I okay. get up in the vent? Uh, you absolutely can. And actually, as you reach to touch the vent, you get a little static shock. And, under my breath and you feel like the hair on the back of your neck and everywhere is sort of standing up on end a little bit and uh but you can get into the vent without a problem i very much do so okay so you go crawling through the vents and yeah. i would like for you to make a difficulty <laughs> five check to just see how long it takes you to speed check to see how long it takes you to stumble onto something meaningful and if you possibly beat everybody else to it. Okay. Uh, I rolled a five, so I'm going to say probably a long time. Yeah, no, you're you're trying to navigate these vents and it is just, it's really labyrinthine and everything looks roughly the same. And for like someone who regularly has done like burglaries and things, uh-huh. You would expect that it would have been easier, but it's just really strange. It's almost like, and once in a while you get this static shock that kind of throws you off as you're going through here. Um, okay. You do manage to find, though, that you reach the lobby and you see this uh, man wildly jump kick <laughs> over another man who ducks out of the way. He nearly hits a little girl and she drops this enormous book. Mm. And uh, you can make that same perception roll, de- uh, the difficulty of five, to see if you notice a thing. Okay. Uh, I don't think a 14 is going to do it. Nope. Nope. So uh, you do see it, though. And uh, from here on, uh, we'll go back to the lobby. Okay. And um, just as all of the rest of the high schoolers sort of file in and everyone gets situated and where they need to be. Um, You, uh, the, uh, the doors slam shut and you see that the uh, alarms start going off that would signal that it is a lockout due to super villainous activity. And these really nice white bars jut down over all the windows and doors 
and the uh and, and everyone's sort of like looking around as this blue flashing light is just strobing and making everything suddenly so much more intense. Double fuck. And um and the TV goes like and all of a sudden on all of the monitors, you see the same man from last night. Albert? Oh good, it wasn't me. <laughs> the 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 uh portly fellow wearing a uh dark navy uh spandex suit with like uh violet pink accessories and like a white mask and like a almost like he's wearing a suit coat sort of design or maybe a lightning bolt you're not really sure and uh you see that that same man that was tethered to the uh the antenna the other night is now uh tied to a chair and uh so are all of the anchor people for the newscast and he's uh sort of he he kind of adjusts the tv he's like well hello there everyone thought you could get rid of me didn't you well i'm not gone yet did, this is my did he show not, and it's he not all get about turned the in, weatherman did he not get turned into the authorities no you guys saw him get dragged away by the police okay what is his does, he, does his does he have a super villain name and i missed it or is he not said it he or just announced himself? it as the weatherman oh okay i, I thought he was fired so he's technically not the weatherman no that was albert is that this are you saying that's the same guy <clears throat> suddenly katie like just goes quiet as she realizes she was just as dumb as elaine in like realizing <laughs> so that was... she may have talked about information that she shouldn't have known and goes <laughs> Oh no, I think I was just really naive. Oh, anyone <laughs> who even... wants Well first Ted, what were you gonna say? I was gonna say, is there is there a way to slip off into, you know, some, somewhere unseen? Absolutely. Easy easily done. Right. And um... uh so uh you guys uh while while this is while you're slipping away. Um, anyone who wants to can try to make an intellect roll with a difficulty of four to see if they can figure out that this is probably the old weatherman. And that would include Magpie. Oh yeah, easily. Because you can see what's going on right now, Lisa. Okay. That's a 12. Okay, so you succeed. A 12 also. All right, success. What about Leo? I had like 16. Okay, and what about Johnny Silver? Nope, nine. Okay, so the three of you very quickly piece together. This is probably Albert Rogers, the okay. same man that was the weatherman previously. All right. Oh, this is really dangerous. Like, isn't that him? Like, so he's technically, he's calling himself the weatherman, but he's literally not the weatherman because- I think it's like a capital W now. Like before that was just his position, but now it's like a mantle he's- claiming for himself yeah it doesn't seems a bit desperate he does seem kind of pathetic, pathetic. I, I need to go to the bathroom slip off to do a costume change mm. okay you can absolutely do that so uh, what are my, our teachers doing for um, our, so our... Miss Legrand starts screaming demands for people to be orderly and she's getting most of the people together but right now she's just trying to break up the people that are still making out like they aren't even aware of what's going on <laughs> <laughs> and um and so she's kind of preoccupied with that you two would notice uh Katie and Leo would notice that Kiefer and Johnny both slipped off elsewhere. so before I do like I imagine we were like heading towards an elevator or something Mm -hmm. um, yeah. At the elevator, do they have one of those cork boards, like with like what's on which floor? Yes, they do. In fact, so I guess I would look, you know, I look for, um, you know, what floor the newsroom was on. Okay. Okay. Um, you can easily find that. You don't need to make a roll or anything. You can okay, figure so it out. Okay. So when I slip off, I'm looking for a stairwell, and I'll take the stairs. Okay, so you oh. take the stairwell to the um, 
third floor. Kiefer, Kiefer would try to like slip away unnoticed, and mm-hmm. uh, like he's got three ranks in movement powers for his power shift. Okay, so, all right. I, I don't know whether that even requires a roll, but it does. It it, it applies, so you can just go ahead and make a a, a, a stealthy roll. All right, so that would be a ten. Uh, so that's essentially like a twenty-two. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You're great. You're great. Yeah. So um, you notice that Johnny Silver at least slips away near the elevator briefly and then goes in the stairs. So can I say that like Kate, like Elaine, put out like Facebook friend requests to sure. everyone. So she like the ones who've accepted. She like sends like a group message saying hey anyone near like the tv station should we do something question mark and send it okay and of course leo pings yeah um I- i'll check that and then look over at Katie and be like those two old guys disappeared you think they might be in tr- in trouble should we go look for them it looks like mrs legrand has things under control here Okay. Um, before we try to slip away ourselves, I have a little uh, disc-shaped thing uh, that I detach from my belt and use my uh, minor illusion power, which I have put uh, several power shifts in so like lasts longer. And I'll make an illusion of Katie and I, just sort of static that we're just sort of like huddled in safety somewhere in this room. Okay, okay. Hold on, let me let me pay the points for that. I just have to make a note that Magpie leaves you on red. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Best friends. What about what about uh Kiefer and Johnny? Do you answer this email? Yeah. No. He he is not a uh, not a tech dude. Um so like he might have had it, but like ah, there, you know, I'll deal with that message later. Uh, there's something important going on here. Yeah. What's so it, Meg? I, guess, I guess maybe like Blowhard has his own like Facebook page, uh, and that's mm-hmm. kind of like what he what he gives out. Like he's not super into technology, but he's running a business, so you got to do social media, even if you're bad at it. Um, right. <laughs> Get one of those websites that looks like it was like GeoCities or something. It yeah. just never updated. <laughs> and so I'll be like, in route, heading, you know, heading for the news. Iron Wolf Green dot Angel Fire. Oh my god, Angel <laughs> Fire. Elaine's profile picture is just like a selfie like this with like her bird wings. Like, <laughs> what, uh, what did Magpie respond? What was? What did she? Left oh red. no, she just left you on red. Yeah. Oh. It looks like it's just up to us, Katie. Nobody, we're the only ones here. Okay. I mean, this seems really dangerous. Like, for sure. I, 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 you know, to be honest, I was telling, I'm confusing what I know, what Leo knows, and what Nightlight knows. Um, knows So you don't know Katie is a hero yet. You just know you are. So Katie's like your non powered bestie. She's magic, and so she's got magic and strange abilities. Or, I mean, Look, she's got magic. Everybody needs a sidekick. Yep. Yeah, right. Yep. I think as far as you're aware, hey, we're equals. Like... This is an equal partnership. <laughs> Mrs. Okay. LeGrand put Paradise together. Do you think we'll get extra credit on our assignment? It is weather related. It is weather related. Agreed. I think we can make a concise <laughs> argument. Let's do it. We'll definitely ace this project. So, yeah, we'll go after wherever we think they might follow our instincts. Our superhero <laughs> sense. All right. So, um, you are you going off into what, like, one of the wells or into the elevator or anything, Leo? I don't know. What do you think, Katie? Like, I think we know they are probably better. We can get access to them. Good call. We don't want to get stuck in an elevator. So yeah, we'll, we'll do that. We'll take the stairs. Okay, you're taking the stairs. So uh, about halfway up. Johnny Silver, you hear the door shut from down below. So are you I like he's like running up the stairs, and as he does, he's like pulling off his clothes and putting on the domino, the uh-huh. domino mask. 
No one will know. So you like just barely get dressed as you see the, uh, well, Leo, are you going to get dressed down below? Or are you going as you go up or what? Uh, once we get in the stairwell, you know, he sort of just wears his under his clothes and then just pulls it up. Okay. So right around the time that you get dressed, you see nightlight at the base of the stairs. And Katie, I guess you're just kind of hanging out. A fucking teenage sidekick. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we're equal partners. Blowhard. I, I knew you'd be here. You have to. Nightlight, is that you? You got here fast. And why did you bring your girlfriend to a crime scene? Oh, no. That's, no, no, no. That's my partner. No. no. <laughs> it, it was dangerous down below, and I felt we felt safer together. So. I think it's going to be more dangerous where we're going. Man, Miss, you should you should probably go back to the rest, go back downstairs where the rest of your classmates are. So you don't have arthritis. Excuse me. Don't worry, don't worry, Blowhard. With you there, she'll be fine. Uh, if you say so, I don't think it's a great idea. Uh, and then I continue running up the steps. <laughs> okay, so you run up the steps and. Uh... Uh, I, and I say to Katie, like, it could be dangerous, so just make sure you stay behind Blowhard. He's so tough, I'm sure you can take whatever they throw at And you really have this hero worship thing, Pam. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Since the B-lister's gone, he's the best hero in the neighborhood. But your father figure is still okay? Oh, yeah. Okay, I, I mm -hmm. Yeah, I love helping him at the store. You should... Meet him sometime, you can come over for dinner. My mom makes a great brisket. I just need to be clear, we're not dating. No, absolutely not. Okay, because if you have and a I'll, sister, I'll just put I'd out my hand to share. We're, we're equal partners. Okay, there you go. All right. Cool. All right, so Katie, are you going with them or are you kind of hanging back? No, I'm going with them. Okay, you're going with them. So what is Magpie doing? Um, okay, have I realized that these are people that I sort of know? Um, so you hear these exchanges from the air vents, but uh, if you're trying to navigate to them to watch what's happening, you'll need to make a uh, difficulty for speed check. All right, let's I, go. I think the big question is, is you know, was Magpie able to look on at either, uh, you know, Johnny or... Um, Crap. Uh, Leo. That's what we're trying to hey. see. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right. So I rolled the 19 on the die this time. 19. Around. Okay. So I am going to impose a GM intrusion. The GM intrusion affects uh, both Nightlight and uh, Johnny Silver. Oh. So uh, both of you are going to get an experience and you can give one to someone else. Then we'll I'll give one to Magpie. You and can't. You can't. Oh, uh, that's right. Uh, I meant uh, to uh, Katie. And I, 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 was, I was looking at you. Villain. I guess I will give one to Winda. Okay. The the uh, the intrusion is that Magpie, you see the entire thing from Johnny Silver entering all the way through. So you now have the two secret identities. Oh. But there's another intrusion for Magpie, okay. which is you fall out of the vent. All right. <laughs> so uh, I'm still Lisa right now, by the way. Yep. Oh. Um, right, like right Katie in front of us? Katie turns around and goes, so you can give one to Lisa. somebody else, but you get one. Uh, all right. Uh, who has like already gotten the spare point tonight? I haven't been keeping track. We've all hey, right, now, right now it's even. Oh, yeah, right yeah. now it's even. Okay, so we're yeah. going to go with Katie. Yeah. Okay. Did she fall out of the bed like right in front of us, sort of? Yep, just like oh. right in the middle of the stairs. Oh my god! It's Wait, we know her. We know her from high school, but we yes, don't you know, know that her she's as a high school legend. Man, this is really new. <laughs> Hi. The what layers, are you doing man, here? The layers. <laughs> robbing the I'm um, robbing the uh, weather report place, the news station. That's the oh. uh, Lisa would not have forgotten news station. That was player error. Um, yeah, yeah, right. Robbing That's the right. news station. We well, sure really picked a heck of a thing. time. I know. I really thought that alarm was for me. Really glad it wasn't. Fair. <laughs> so what's the situation? So, 
this villainous weatherman who took con- who takes control of the weather took control of the station and I, I was going to help uh, blow hard. Uh, he's a really popular superhero in my neighborhood. Uh, Try to put a stop to it. And this young lady was here on a school project. Um, and I'm just plucky sidekick. And sure. Uh-huh. Okay, and like I uh, was the one that recognized your voice in the first session, the uh, word choice that you had, yes. and uh, caught it when Elang said Katie. So I'm like, I see. <laughs> <laughs> like I know the whole picture of what's going on right now. <laughs> um, trying to live, trying my level best not to let it show on my face. Sure, sure. Night later, you going there with a second girlfriend now? What is going on? When I'm not his girlfriend. You should send me them back with the rest of the class. <laughs> I excuse me. <clears throat> I haven't gone to high school in years. That's a bit creepy, dude. Like the age difference there, like, come on, like. What are you talking idiot. about? Not a high school student. Uh, but is it, but she stopped aging, right? Yeah, don't you know that I you're just, 17? Yes. Yeah. I just have baby. <laughs> but you don't know there. I'm 17. <laughs> you, just, you, you don't know no, that he's a true, But I just said they should just send them back with the yeah. class and they yeah, showed yeah, up yeah. with you. Your yeah. obsession with heteronormativity is really confusing, <laughs> Boomer. <sighs> I'm Look, everybody, there's a dangerous I'm super concern for your safety. Um, <laughs> the, the guy we're about to go contend with throws ice and lightning. Yes. Okay. This is going to make things and, far more difficult if I head through, head through the door at the third floor. You can do it. We can do okay. it. Mr. Blower, I, 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 I like put up my hand for a family yeah. around them. Actually, I, I'm very not sure about this. So when I go through the door, I want to break the door handle off. Okay. Um. So, Winda, as you're, you hear some kind of argument or something <laughs> going on commotion-wise in the stairwell as you pass by, and all of a sudden the door flies open and the door handle is broken off by Blowhard. Uh, so I imagine, you know, he reacts, you know, quickly, you know, m- moving into a defensive position, thinking that, you know, maybe Weatherman has got some kind of, you know, lackey, sidekick, ally, what have you, and it's like, oh, the team. <laughs> oh, good, you're Wait, good. Uh, Nightlight is in the stairwell, but he's got a couple of teenagers with him. I don't know what he's thinking. Uh, so I broke the door handle to hopefully keep them out of trouble. <laughs> Oh, oh, I am very familiar with the inner mechanisms of door <laughs> handles. <laughs> while, you're, while you're messing with that, I, 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 I am like, you know, like, I don't, you know, do you think Blowhard had a, had a point? I mean, it might be really dangerous in there. Ha. Huh. You know what's dangerous? Robbing the news station. Let's go. All right. You hey, know what's dangerous? I... Stealing cars. <laughs> hey, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> Nah, probably not. <laughs> but this so, will be fun, so. Is your motley group going to be sneaky about things, or are you just no. bum-rushing into the I'm, uh, the recording studio? I'm, fly, I'm, I'm flying, you know, straight at that dude. I'm bum-rushing. Okay. I've got okay. good cover. <laughs> All right. Cool beans. So, uh... Everyone is going to be bursting in. Oh, so, no, I'm sneaking. I'm oh, using them sneak- as cover for sneaking. Okay, that's fair. So I'm going to need an initiative check from everyone. That's a speed check. Yeah. What's our, uh, the what's our difficulty? The difficulty for Weatherman remains at a three, which means he has a nine for his initiative. 19. I have shift four for initiative. So does okay. that just mean that I add three for each of those? Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you get like a ridiculous. So, uh, well, eleven was my twenty-eight. Jeez. Oh. Well, it just means oh. if he's a three and you have a four, you don't roll. You just beat him. Yeah. I got a ten. I, got 11, I have. So. I. I'm inhibited. I've got an inability, so that actually turns <clears throat> into a seven. Okay, so we know for sure that Magpie beat him. Uh, what 22. did uh, Winda get? 22. 
Oh yeah, when all of you guys beat him. So basically, I'm just gonna let you guys kind of hand it off to each other. And then when everybody's gone, then the weatherman will go since all, right. all of you guys won. So we will start oh, with probably- Everyone. Uh, everyone bit me. The, everyone bit uh, The Winda, because he was bum rushing. So Winda, start us out. All right, so describe the scene as we kind of burst on. Okay, you burst through these double doors. You see the light overhead uh, says quiet recording. <laughs> And uh, you burst in to see that there are cameras lined up everywhere. The cameramen are like actually like taped to the cameras. So they're forced to man, man mm. the cameras. You see that everyone else is uh, like in their seats, but they're just like tied down with like tape over their mouths. So they can't really participate. And you see Weatherman is currently like doing his normal weather shtick, describing the weather, and he's totally wrong. You already know he's wrong. Just by oh, the he's weather actually trying to do the in. like do the weather. Oh yeah, he's just doing the oh, weather. So everyone okay. in the lobby is just forced to watch him in this superhero costume do the weather. So okay. are they are they tied or tied to their seats? They they are tied to their seats with duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. I don't know how this is how this is gonna work, and I'll, I'll throw this out there to see if it's possible. Uh, one of my one of my powers is far step, and I can. Oh, it, it's man. supposed to be like a teleport, uh, but my uh -huh. my idea is I do it via the wind. Uh -huh. um, so, can I zip in to one of the anchors and use my power and get them out? Sure, you can absolutely do that. All right. Um, so, um, is that something you have to roll usually? Uh, it's a, it costs points. Okay, so Red yeah, you just go at it then. So I'm I move in. Um, you know, is it uh, wh wh who are who are the anchors that are there? Okay, so right now, uh, as far as the anchors go, you have Jeff. He's this kind of like a uh, mediocre man with ex excellent hair, but otherwise very plain looking. You see uh, the lady next to him. Her name is uh, Jacinda. And um, she's usually like a little bit more put together than Jeff is. They sort of have that dynamic going on. And then you have the sports caster off to the right, which is Buck. All right, so whoever is the closest to the weatherman is the one I'll grab. Okay, that would probably be just Cindy. All right. So she has been moved to safety. All right. So you guys, do you want to describe how you do this? Um, or do you want me to narrate? Uh, I mean, I I imagine like I I I zip in and as fast as I am, I'll kind of give a salute to uh, the weatherman uh, as I uh -huh. appear as I appear next to Jacinda, and then the wind swirls around us and flies out of the out of the room at you know you know in the blink of an eye and i i place her down you know safely and pass it along all right so you guys see that just all of a sudden she and uh winda in this tornado and the doors off to the side burst open and she's gone like all of the tape that was holding her there is still there she's just been poofed away. And uh, who are you ha passing it off to? Uh, who wants, whoever wants next. So I, I was right behind oh, yeah, Winda. I mean, I, okay. I was the magpie is a lot faster. So if you want to do something, you can. No, by all means. So the thing I, I'm doing is not time sensitive. OK, so I imagine I'm going through the door as Winda is coming <laughs> out with this person. So I'm going uh -huh. to run in and put myself between Weatherman and the and the rest of the hostages. Uh -huh. And then I just begin just blowing in front of me and creating this wall of air that okay. uh, will... Uh, uh, for one minute, you automatically deflect or dodge any ranged projectiles attacks. However, on your next turn, you are... Uh, you're attacked with a ranged projectiles uh, it looks like there's something missing there. Um, oh, I, I don't think I can do anything while, while I do that. Um, cause I'm hit, my, all my actions are hindered while I do that. Uh, but I just want to create a barrier between 
me and the weatherman so that if he tries to use any of his like powers that you know it'll deflect off of that instead of hitting the hostages okay okay so uh you guys watch as uh blowhard just and instead of the normal just blowing forward it turns into this wall of wind type effect and you see the air distorting and papers flying everywhere. And you see the hostages, they're just like wide-eyed, like what's going on? And like, uh, Jeff is just staring at the empty chair beside him, like what happened? <laughs> and uh, so uh, you just shut down all of my projectile abilities, good sir. Dang, okay, <laughs> we'll pass it off to somebody. <laughs> uh, magpie, I suppose. Yeah, I, I just want to sneak in there and unplug the cameras. <laughs> okay, all right, oh. sure. Uh, yeah, keep running. Yeah, Nathan. you keep on running and we get to see what we're doing. Okay, all right. Um, you can, no, I mean, it's your, oh, yeah, you're, you're, you're acting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I was just thinking that, like, he wants people to see what he's mm, doing and we can take the attention away from him. So, like, that's true. pull the yeah. plug on that. Okay, so uh, make a difficulty four check to get all of the things and if you get um a nine so you gotta go, you're going for a 12 if you get a nine then you can get half of them okay so, i got a 10 it's a speed check got a 10 okay so you manage to get half of the cameras unplugged including the one that's facing him and he and he doesn't even notice at first so he's still kind of going at it right now and you see the cameramen are just sort of like looking at you wide eyed, like, oh, and you see like, and you see like this lady with the boomstick that's got like the fuzzy part and everything. She just holds it there and she kind of looks like terrified as well. So nobody really knows what's going on with you guys. Okay. So who are you passing it off to? Oh, Leo. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, these are two, but yeah, sure. I'll certainly go next. I go, uh, I go last. I didn't go Oh, okay. Oh, that's right. That's right. Um. So, just real quick, so Blowhard's got some sort of wind wall that's protecting his hostages that were seated. Mm -hmm. The cameramen are still at their cameras, though. Not, uh -huh. not Are they not protected by that wind wall? Uh, so they are not, because they're okay. in a different place. You have, okay. like, maybe two cameramen that are protected. So I am going to, oh, let me just check something real quick, because I don't know if this action. I don't know if this thing is a, it's an action. And that's an action. Okay, so yeah, I will sort of just uh, dash into the room, past weatherman, and I'll, and I'll say, "Sorry to rain on your parade, weatherman, but it's just not uh, your vic uh, your victory isn't in the forecast today." And I'll, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll go over by <laughs> I'll go over by the cameramen uh -huh. that are that are unplugged but still you know taped to their things, uh -huh. and I'll say. And I'll tell, like, just say to them, like, just pretend like you're still filming. I think, you know, you should, you, he probably, you know, he wants you to be filming, so he probably wouldn't target you. But I will also, while, while they're doing that, like, sort of extend my resonance field, which is just sort of like a vaguely shimmering bubble of light in front of those camera people to protect them, which okay. is sort of like Dave's thing where it's like I'm hinder and it's gonna cost me a bunch of Okay, shit. all right. That's what I'll do. So yeah, I'm just like standing in front of the camera people with my hands out like emitting this bubbly. Okay, thing. all right. So what is Katie yeah. doing during this? Uh, as everyone has gone in, Katie's like, mm -hmm. meh, gets a book, <laughs> checks it in her chest um, and spends her might point, a might point, uh -huh. um, to get big, Okay, so uh, and you kind of like squeezes, in, squeezes into the room <laughs> and looks at the weatherman and says, "I didn't get a chance to hit you last time. <laughs> My turn." <laughs> so you guys see as the door, the double doors burst open once again, and this giant bird lady sort of ducks in, and uh, she's very intimidating very intimidating and the weatherman's attention goes directly to the bird lady what oh you always have to ruin everything 
and uh, he is going to try to go for uh, for the bird lady. So I'm going to roll a die to see what effect he's doing. Okay, so um, so he shouts, um, "Looks like you're about to get scorched!" And you see this gale of icy wind just blow directly at you along. So you need to roll Ooh. a uh, difficulty three check to avoid being hit by this uh, icy wind. No problem. And what kind of dodge is, what kind of like defense? It's a speed this? defense. Speed is the okay. default defense, unless, so mine <laughs> unless I tell you otherwise. While I'm big, it's hindered. So it's difficulty four. Okay. okay. So you got to roll a 12 or better. That is an 18. All right. So describe how you dodge. Uh, so Elaine just like takes her big wings and makes like this kind of like barrier shield kind of uh -huh. thing. And it kind of just flows around her. Mm -hmm. And she just looks at him and is like, if they don't put you out, I'm really going to hit you very, very hard. My fists are very big. <laughs> um, so at this point, I'm going to insert another GM intrusion. So uh, the weatherman still has his icy thing going and uh, he throws the he throws his hand with this glowing purple light and this purple glowing frost mm. just blasting into the wall of wind on purpose to try to spread it out. And this is going to affect, uh, this is going to affect Magpie. Magpie, okay. he is basically getting a free attack on you. So you get a uh, an experience and you can give one to someone else. All right, uh, Leo this time. Oh, okay. Nice. And you need to make a, uh, difficulty three, so you got to roll a nine or a better on a speed check to avoid okay. it. The Quintry Blast. You got a what? Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay, easily. You easily avoid the icy wind, and you see that as it sprays along this wall, it encases things in this thick layer of ice that has an mm. almost purple sheen to it as it's... Uh, as you catch it in the light just the right way. And that is Weatherman. So blow hard. That was actually a GM intrusion. Or, or, oh, that was a GM intrusion. You're right. So actually, it should be uh, Winda. I'm sorry, Winda. Uh, so what do you guys think? You know, should I get more bystanders out or should I attack? You can do a lot of damage at the moment with that blowy thing if we can't keep them protected, they might get. And I will turn my attention to the bystanders this round, so. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so then I will go into, uh, you know, I uh, was Jeff, you said? Um, uh, Jeff, yes. Yeah. So I'll, I will do, uh, spend the point and do another far step. So I'll zip in, grab Jeff, zip out. Oh. Um, all right. So you just zip in. And once again, you guys see this as the doors burst open again. And all of a sudden, Winda is right behind Jeff. And he grabs his shoulders and just like in this whirl of glowing green smog and wind, they all the way back out. It smells kind of like sour, sweet, not great, you know, kind of skunky. And uh, it looks like your flan's evaporating as quick as the morning dew, weatherman. Good pun, Nightlight. <laughs> you know what? I am going to start a thing. Good puns. You can earn one extra experience per game. Oh, oh shit. And he just there opened Pandora's box for Ted. Pandora only comes oh, out of the box. He, he did say good puns. He said good puns. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> well, hey, man, if you threw a 10 out there, nine of them suck. You still might get <laughs> All right. So uh, who are you handing it off to, Ted? Uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'll toss it to Robin. Okay, so Magpie, you're going. Okay. So who Magpie is left in terms of bystanders? 
Uh, so you have Buck, the sports caster, and you have five camera people as well as the boomstick operator. Okay. Uh, I feel like the boomstick operator is going to be noticed first, and um, the sports caster guy probably isn't doing a whole lot right now, so we're going to go for him first. Okay. So you're going for the sports caster. Yes. I'm also okay. stealing his wallet. Okay. You. Like you, you know do. what? I'm just gonna let you steal the wallet. So <laughs> it's how are incidental. You or getting him to safety. Uh, I'm just gonna like I'm I'm going around the perip. I'm trying to stay out of the cameras. I'm just gonna like grab him and take his chair out. <laughs> so you're just wheeling him out. <laughs> okay, make a difficulty five uh, speed check for stealth. I will spend a point of effort. Okay, so that becomes a four, so you gotta roll a 12 or a better. Okay, I only got an 11. An 11. So now, just you, as you no. get to the door- But if you're, if you're trained in in stealth or, or movement, then that would, like if you rolled an 11, that would turn right. into a 14. Which I am good. trained in stealth. There you go. Oh, okay, so there you go, so you did succeed. <clears throat> so you just kind of like, wheel him out like wee, 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 and get the chair all the way out those double doors once again so buck is no longer a victim so and who are you passing it to magpie uh window already went so uh let's go with blowhard yeah. so blowhard. Quick, quick question quick question yeah so magpie's not wearing an outfit right you're just nope. there as lisa right nope. She's yes. Lisa. actually i, I so, should be calling I should be calling her Lisa instead of calling them Magpie. <laughs> so I think at this point in time, like there's like, even though you're stealthing in the room, like when you're wheeling this person out, <laughs> Window would see just like a regular person yes. helping out. Um, yep. Teenage um, girl. <laughs> you just odd. see this random teenager who looks, well, you can describe how she looks. Uh, I mean, like, she's got, like, the big oversized hoodie and the gloves on, so, like, there's not really a whole lot of skin showing. Occasionally, you get, like, a flash of very pale face and, like, bushy, like, uh, curly, dark hair, like, sticking out. But, like, for the most part, it just looks like a civilian in big, poopy hoodie. All right. Noted. All right, so Blowhard, what are you doing? I am going to extend my wall of wind forward at Weatherman to slam him into the wall. Oh, using my push okay. Ability. And I'm just going to roll and see what happens. So that's a 10. That succeeds. Oh. So he, He's only a difficulty three. He's not very skilled. So I don't know how much damage that would do. But, uh, I'm able to move him up to two, two, plate, two range increments. But there is a wall there. <laughs> So Okay, we will say that is probably equivalent to a heavy weapon because he's going to be knocked into the, the green board and everything else. Like, it, he's going to be knocked into some stuff. Six damage, so, nice. Yeah, that six hey, that's damage. pretty I mean, moving two increments, it's like 100 feet away or something like that. Yep, so you just... And as you see this wall of wind just go forward and move into him, it plows into Weatherman and he crashes through the green screen, through the metal shelving with paint cans, so he's now covered in paint, and he slams into the wall behind. And with that, I will gesture to Elang and kind of like, you know, point to her and like, do like a sweeping motion towards the weatherman because I'm blowing, so I can't actually talk. <laughs> uh-huh. So does like, is is that, is that in a, happen in a direction that it's called on camera? Um. We'll say, let me roll Hampton Stance. I love that mechanic from Robin. I love it. Yes, in fact. Excellent. So people are watching this humiliation ensue. And uh, Ilan, what are you doing? Ilan turns to one of the cameras that are on. Oh, actually, let me. Yes, it was one of the ones that were on. <laughs> and says, children, you may want to look away. <laughs> and then like stomps off towards the weatherman and just starts cracking his head in with her giant bird fists. Okay, so go ahead and make a difficulty three attack roll. 
Thank I you. would like to automatically succeed with a G of intrusion, please. Just because You it's can fun. do that! You can do that! Um, so she gets, she gets the also her fists... Success. I get a GM intrusion for later. Her fists are considered heavy weapons in this current form. Mm -hmm. And she has strength times two. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure what damage level that makes. From what I understand, it's that, like plus... That that's another 12? Okay. That's yes. a lot. That, that's another <laughs> six. So that's 12 damage. <laughs> yeah. So, um... Damn. Oh, yes. All right, so you... Well, you describe to us, how do you pummel this guy with a single punch? <laughs> she just, as she said, she turns to the camera and goes, children, look away. Sometimes justice is violent. <laughs> and then she turns to Nightlight and says, do not think less of me, my friend. Um, and then actually, like, when she said that, I inadvertently looked away. <laughs> 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 and I'm like, ah. but then I look. And like, then she like full on like does an eagle like full on eagle like guttural scrow, and then like in the distance because um, Blowhard pulled him or pushed him away so far away, she literally like jumps in the air in the little space and does like a flying oh, yeah. punch. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> and yeah, that's like, so I can hit totally the wall, and then she's all Hell like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then just to stand over him and like, I told you, it was going to hurt. And so you watch as this giant eagle lady, boom, and he crashes through the wall, because these aren't thick walls, <laughs> and uh, crashes through another wall, and he is just amidst a mess at this point. He's got paint all over him, and Nightlight's the only one left then. Oh. Uh, Turn to the camera guys. I'm like, did you get that? <laughs> and, and 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 the guy's just like, mm -hmm. uh, I will let my. It looked like he was. Is he like KO'd? Uh, he's not KO'd yet. He's just like very. But he's very... like a, a distance from us. Then I will. Uh, I'll try to get that. Uh, like I'll use my turn to like help the camera. You know, okay. Fasten because it looks like. And as I do, as I'm sort of you know like doing that, I know. I don't know if the camera can pick me up, but I'll just say, uh, uh, you know, it's like, well, just another uh, dastardly deed foiled by the crime ruiners. The crime ruiners? <laughs> oh my God, that's uh, terrible. Make Amazing. A, uh, make a difficulty three <laughs> check to get that to stick. Until I'm just, oh God. Uh, he, he, Leo doesn't suffer from analysis press. <laughs> His work's <shopping. laughs> That's a moon, so that's a that's a that twenty. Oh god! So the crime ruiners is just what you guys are now. <laughs> Everyone, no matter what you try to do, at least for a good long while, people will think of you as the crime ruiners. <laughs> oh, I've got no one XP to give out <laughs> as well, so I'll give that out to Dave. So the okay. One XP all right, so Dave, you have another experience point, and it is now Weatherman's turn, and uh, he is going to uh, heal. You ruined everything, and this bard lady. What is wrong with me? And and his 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 uh. His, we only ruin crime, Weatherman. Purple, purple lightning, and he just unleashes this purple lightning. He's like, I was going for rain, but sure. <laughs> and, we uh, only ruin crime, Albert. I am going to use my GM intrusion to make that two more difficult for Ooh. you to dodge. So that brings it up to a five. So you have to roll a 15 or better on a speed check. Me? No, Elon. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. So actually, you have a hindrance to that. So that makes it a six. <laughs> so you have to roll an 18 or better. Okay. Uh, I would like to spend some of my intellect on fleets. Okay. Okay, so it's back down to a 15 or better. Yeah. I make great choices. Oh. That is a 14. 14. You take 10 damage. Oh, from this uh, lightning attack. And no. that is to your might. Oof. 
Cool. I still have mine. So you lose 10 points. That's almost three times as much as my total might. (laughs) It's more than my total might. And uh, that is his round. So uh, (laughs) we are going to put it back at... uh, I'm just going to roll a die randomly. Okay, that is... So... Nightlight, you're up. Oh boy. We rebranded everyone. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing now? Um I, I actually am just gonna ham it up. It looks like they got it. And I say what would what happened just now is is our powerhouse Elon just gave him a flying bird punch and now uh our team leader Blowhard is gonna wrap things up. And I'll sort of turn the ca- and like I'll i you know, I'm like looking in the camera and I'll like turn Still it. Toward- didn't vote for him. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, make another intellect check, DC three, to get people to believe that this is what's going on. Okay. So you gotta roll a nine or better. He's a hot man. Uh, that is a fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. So uh, you have managed to convince the masses <laughs> that Blowhard is the leader now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, who are you handing it off to, Doug? Uh, Blowhard. And I just literally take my hands on the camera, like looking into it and like turn it towards him. (laughs) Well, with that, I will drop my wall of wind and then just do like a a, a project, uh, one of my uh, blowhard attacks at him. And I will spend effort to bring it down because I don't want to miss. That's a 20 on the die. Oh, okay. Crime ruined. So that so is amazing. I do oh my God. seven <laughs> normally, and uh, crit adds four or three? Uh, four, I think, because it starts at seven. So that's 11. And if he's not KO'd, I want him to be stunned. Oh, no, I'm doing the extra damage. It doesn't matter. You know what? You needed one more point of damage to succeed to get him KO'd. Well, <laughs> so you got so with that you got it. So describe how you mess this guy up and he oh, is out. I thought you were saying he had one left after that, but he had one. No, yeah, I was like, damn. Him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, it just slams him into the final wall. Uh huh. Um, which I don't, is that an exterior wall? Or? That one is the exterior wall that leads out into the hallway. So okay, okay. This one's the soundproof wall. <laughs> and, he, and yeah, he's just lying in a pile of rubble there, moaning now. Oh. And you guys. And I turn to the camera, see kids, crime doesn't pay, and stay off the drugs. <laughs> You just hear Lisa sigh so aggressively. <laughs> <laughs> like, but it does pay. <laughs> just like sitting here counting the money in the wallet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so actually, um, you you succeeded in stealing enough to get you up to the next wealth level. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. So, um. Yeah, and Elong, you kind of like shake off this stun. Oh. You you were you were like kind of paralyzed for a minute with that electricity, and you just kind of shake it off, and you're good. And everything sort of uh, quiets down just a bit as he's now just. Oh, why? So after uh. Like once he's once he's down and down, mm-hmm. window would like quickly zip back through the uh, the building and get back into his uh, you know kefir clothing. Okay. And, you know, try to try to make his way to the the main the main office. Like he's trying to make sure his boss is okay. Okay. After seeing what's going on. Um, go ahead and start by making a, uh, a, uh, tr- tr- we'll say a speed check. Okay. Um, the difficulty is going to be a six. Okay. Uh, so I have, I have three ranks for my power shift. So I need uh-huh. three. Uh, so I need, so it's, it makes it difficulty three, nine or better. So 14 on the die. All right. So 
you, as, as you're whooshing around doing this, just as you come out dapper in your three-piece suit and all that, <coughs> excuse me, you catch a glimpse of a humanoid figure watching from around the corner. They are shadowed. Um, once again, you see like a trench coat and a uh, hat, but this person has a mop of hair that would distinguish them from uh, Walter, who is bald. Okay. And uh, just this mop of dark hair, and they quickly turn and go around the corner. So I, do I think I was observed? Um, you think that uh, the person at least saw you coming out like that. That's all you can okay. say for okay. sure. All right. <clears throat> Um, Alang will burst out a window to leave. Okay. Right? But then everyone will hear quite clearly a loud crash in the stairwell. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then the book spits out of Katie in the stairwell and she walks in and goes, oh, wow, you guys are great. <laughs> so uh, yeah. when you crash out, you see people screaming because you land on a car just smush this really nice long uh long haul car it's like very retro future you know just like long and sleek it's really nice and you just destroy the thing and when you do you see a uh, paper boy slash paper man reporting outside <clears throat> trying to make his way in somehow and um calling it then make your way back into the stairwell and uh, when you come out of the hallway, uh, you can also make a speed check with a difficulty of six. <laughs> she can. Uh, I can. Didn't, didn't, didn't you say you have an, an, an ability? An ability for sneaking. Oh, you're so right. Make so you have to spend points to get it. I will try and spend some points. So it's at least okay. five. <laughs> That's a three on the die. A three? No, absolutely not. So you come out as Katie and you and you guys see you know, like the chunks doors of first concrete open. and stuff in a head. Yep. And you just see Katie with her book. Uh so all the has to You're right in her been... foot. No, you guys say that you're a mate. Sorry, Doug, I didn't mean no, to. No, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. I interrupted you. Oh, no, I was just saying, are you all right, nerdlet? <laughs> Lisa, you're um, so amazing. <laughs> Whatever. So, so somewhere in there, maybe when Winda flew out, or no, after her legs, because that last camera, I'm going to uh, turn the camera back and be like, you know, and just say like, yeah, it looks like everything's safe here. Uh, Winda was able uh, to... Uh, s make sure all the weatherman's hostages are safe and uh, another super crime in progress was ruined by the crime ruiners and I'll throw my flash bomb on the ground <laughs> and turn the and turn the cameras off okay um when you do that uh you well these people are automatically going to fail um they were so, all exited didn't he get them all out of the room no the camera people are still there and, oh, oh. And the flash bomb affects an area. Well, then I wouldn't do it. I, I thought they were. Oh, out okay, of there. okay. I'll just use uh, my. I'll just use my, my points. I'll just use my minor illusion to just make like a dazzling, like, okay. to, to make it go like white and then like turn the camera. Okay, yeah. Or the light. That's you know, the easy light. enough to do. Hold on, let me back the points there. So, um, meanwhile. While all of you are kind of gathering, figure out what you're going to say to each other. Kiefer, you go into your boss's office. Yes. Um, you find a, uh, you find that he's not there. Blake Smith is not currently in his office. Oh, I will, I will look or look around. I mean, obviously if, you know, the weatherman attacked him last night. Maybe he didn't come in. Uh, but I'm just looking looking around to make sure that everybody else is, is safe and you know, whatnot. But you know, with the fact that, hey, I work here, I can walk around wherever. Mm -hmm. So uh, 
Go ahead and give me an intellect check to try to search for something. Sure. Um, what would be my difficulty? Your difficulty is going to be a five. A five. All right. Uh, so let's see here. Looking at my... So I am, I've got a point in, uh, you know, one of, one of my power shifts is intellect. So it says knowledge, uh, all knowledge, science, and craft. So I don't know if that, if it does, cool. If not, I've got a 12. But I could stretch that so I could see it. Yeah. Um. So you notice blood on some papers on the desk. Okay. And and it looks like everything's kind of been recently straightened and cleaned. And as you're kind of like just searching around, you sort of half bumble um, just from the adrenaline and like, you know, the little bit of shake you get and you knock over this uh, award that he had sitting on the desk. And when you knock it, you hear this cranking noise as it tips up and you see there's like this gear mechanism built into it and the bookshelf slides away Mm -hmm. to this room full of monitors and sitting in this chair just like slumped with a large gash cutting the neck open and the head half fallen off and just blood run all down you see Blake Smith hmm so I, I do not enter the room. Does okay. the does the statue you know, or the award, does it write itself or is it on its side? It's on its side right now. I want to, without using my, you know, uh, the, the fingertips, I want to just, can I stand it back up using the back of my hand? Yeah, you can do that. Does and when you matters? do it, the bookshelf slides closed again. Despite the fact of you know him being a stoner, he's not stupid. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So uh, he is he is going to uh, you know report this to the crime ruiners. <laughs> <laughs> I got caught up in the moment. <laughs> when did I? <laughs> I never done this stuff before. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'll, I will. You know, Basically, leave a, a sigh, and you know, left undisturbed. Hopefully, we can investigate this together. Okay. So, and I will. Uh, I will recostume up and try to get back to the group. Okay. So you can do that pretty quickly. So Wynn does gone for only a couple of minutes, but while he's gone, what are you guys doing? Uh, Lisa's smoking a cigarette. We're wrapping up. She's what? She's like lighting a cigarette because that was okay. all very stressful, or at least it was supposed to be very stressful. So she needs to look like she's stressed out. Blairheart is looking to grab his street clothes and make an exit. Okay, I'll, say, I'll make sure this young lady gets back to her classmates safely, uh, and I'll hope, uh, I'll like you know, just kind of gesture for Katie. <laughs> okay, then <laughs> I will go with you. <laughs> and that's what I'll, and then you know once we're away from them like I'll put my regular clothes back on too and like it was incredible yeah I mean I was right. hiding most of the time but you did a great job yeah I, I, thank god you're safe I really got caught up in the moment there I, I think I may have inadvertently named our team but I don't know it just came to me <laughs> and you know it was just all these established heroes and everybody was watching it was amazing Thanks, Katie. Hey, and we have a pretty interesting weather story for class, too. Yeah, purple ice. That was weird. I wonder how he made that. I don't know. Hmm. Another mystery to solve. You do that. Yeah. (laughs) And then she goes back to her book. (laughs) Yep. All right, so... Um, oh, and I just want to clarify, ever. we're not dating. No. <laughs> best partner ever. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, 
So Johnny Silver can easily get into his street clothes and get back to the lobby without being very well noticed. Lisa can either be found out if she really wants to, or she cannot because she's capable either way. Yeah, and she's also going to keep that receipt. Um, for that requisition for thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, just as when, <laughs> just as everybody's about ready to leave, Winda shows up. So, uh, did you have any last things to say before everybody disperses? I just wanted to make sure that I was I was there, you know, in case anybody has. Does he show up like in the lobby? No, I come back to the. Oh, to the oh. no! As you guys oh. are about to head out. Oh. That was really incredible. So, uh, I think uh, you saved all those people, Winda. I uh, do the best that I can. I uh, found found something within the office that I think uh, needs some further investigating, but I don't want to discuss it here. I understand. Oh, Maybe so bad. mysterious. I should probably clear out then. I, need I can take a hint. Civilian. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why, why were there civilians here? Their, he's their friends are civilian. nightlights. They're not dating. To be clear, oh. he's not dating either one of them. They're no. just all platonic friends. She's my crime-fighting partner, and she's... I was, uh, I was just robbing the news station. Yeah. I didn't actually get to steal anything, though, so we're good. She went to my... Katie's school. Why are you robbing the news station? And why would you tell us you're robbing the news station? We put people because who that's rob why I was here, news duh. stations in jail. Yeah, we're the crime ruiners. Are you gonna? I mean, I helped you. It'd be a pretty shitty way to thank me. Did you steal yeah. anything? No. Why would I tell you if I did? Yeah, you I didn't just see her said steal you were anything. trying to steal stuff. Yeah, but I didn't steal anything. Otherwise, uh, why would I have told you I was trying to steal stuff? I'd have come up with a way better excuse. Like I was here touring the facilities with the high school students. I have baby face. I saw her save the sportscaster. I, I that's a plus. That. I uh, don't think it's the best idea to be running around. Uh, Stealing, let alone uh, trying to intervene in super matters. Oh, trying to intervene in crime like you were? We, I mean, at least get a costume, Lisa. Well, shit, I didn't know this was going to happen. Hey, I didn't either. That's what being a superhero is all about. And you want me to just carry around some kind of plastic Halloween mask with me everywhere I go like a dork? I don't think so. (laughs) (laughs) Or just not get involved. I don't think you understand. This is Lisa. She's a legend. You don't tell yeah. Lisa what to do. That's right. I'm Lisa. I, I'm a legend. I do what I want. Uh, I was just offering some advice. Uh, I, you're an adult. Do as you will. Uh, look to, I guess, low hard nightlight. Meet meet up at headquarters when you when you have a chance. You got it, Winda. We're gonna have to talk about. We're gonna have to talk to Walter about Magpie. Clearly, clearly, they saw the the message and ignored it. Look, let's uh, let's uh, <laughs> let's let's be careful with names around the around the civilians. Yeah, I but, mean, uh, you know, Magpie you was on the news with us the other day. I think it's fine. Sure, <laughs> and uh, apparently, uh, team leader. I guess we'll talk later. <laughs> Uh, so I kind hmm. of like I, I, you know, salute at Blowhard and look to Nightlight, uh, and <laughs> you know, I will, I will zip out of there and yet again <laughs> resume, uh, you know, Kiefer clothing. Okay. So uh, all of you get back to the hullabaloo that is now going on downstairs. There is a mess going on outside too, because for the rest of you, some giant monster burst out of the building at some point and destroyed a car. It was the car of the exec, which, I mean, he's dead now, so I guess it doesn't matter much, but his car is destroyed. Um, And, uh, yeah. Across town, in a, in the Capeless Capers, uh, in the Capeless Capers office, 
Walter Mathis is watching the television and he just sort of muses to himself. I guess we chose some potentially good ones. And from the next room over, a voice says, hopefully. And that's where we're going to cut it. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, for playing. Thank you for running, Steven. As always, fantastic GMing. Thank you, everyone, for watching. There are links to everybody in the description. Go follow them across social media and check out all their things. They're awesome people. Also, we have a Kickstarter going on. It is fun that you can check that out in the description as well. And until next time, stay nerdy. Stay nerdy. Stay nerdy. Stay nerdy.